This is Stephen Scullion. He's a 209 marathon runner from over in Ireland. You've probably already seen his YouTube channel. On that channel, there's a video where he walks through his entire gym workout to keep him running strong and staying injury free. Today, I want to try that workout and I want to take you along with me. So let's take a look at this and just start working through this piece by piece. Uh, this is the kind of gym program that I'll do two to three times per week if I'm being really good. I start with some calf walks. The first set were just up nice and tall on the calves. This set is more of an active toe plant. Okay, so calf walks to start out with. Simply gonna do roughly 10 meters, he says. So we're just walking up on our calves, just starting to feel that those calf muscles are doing a fair bit of work there. Okay, turn it around. We're just gonna do there and back. Okay, we'll call this our first 10 meters. And then we're gonna move into, as he describes, those active toe plants. So from here, let's go. Toes up and down, up and down. We well, can definitely feel that I'm not just using my calves here, I'm also starting to fire up those muscles at the front of the shin. Starting to work on tibialis anterior. So often weak for us runners. Okay, trying to stay nice and tall with this. I can feel myself some trying to concentrate. It's quite easy to kind of bend in the middle. Okay, I'm just trying to keep that nice tall posture. Okay, really beginning to feel a bit of fatigue in those calves. We'll go back. Okay, good. Doesn't matter if we're making slow progress. Just want to think about hips forwards, nice and tall. Toes up, point down, toes up, point down. As he says in his video, not letting the heels touch the ground. Okay, so we're out and back doing those. Right, what's next? Okay, oh yeah, I can feel those calves. And, and so everything's up nice and tall. Now I've moved into what I call heel walks. And this is where the shin is pulled up towards your shins and you're walking on the heels. Again, try to keep that body up nice and tall. This is perfect for the shin cool. muscles, so, the pair of nails. Pulling shins, uh, pulling toes up to heels. Sorry, toes up to shins. Keeping those legs straight, trying to hold myself upright. This is really a balance challenge as much as anything else. Okay, slow and controlled. Feeling already feeling some burning down the front of the shin there. And then back. I'm not gonna do the two or three sets. If you're gonna do this workout yourself, feel free to either head down to his video in the description, or you can just replay this section of the video, do two or three times through. Yeah, I can definitely feel that through those shins. Right. The shin muscles, the pair of nails. This is a hip sort of shrug. So this is if you get tight hips and problems around the side of the hips, one leg is staying up nice and tall, the other you're pulling up above the hip bone, but make sure you're focusing on using that hip muscle to drive it up. Yeah, great. Hip hitches. This is one that I've done many, 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 many times over and programmed for people many times over. He's using a step. I'm gonna make life a little bit easier for myself and just bend this knee up underneath me. Little soft knee on the standing leg, and we're looking just to focus on this little hip drop movement. So from here, you squeeze glute med, so you feel the work around the outside of the hip there, and we drop. Squeeze and drop. Let's go for 10. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. It's a great exercise of getting into glute med. I'll show you side on. This guy, glute med, drop and squeeze. Two. If you have a tendency to have a bit of a hip drop while you're running, so your hips sway left to right as you're running, this is a great exercise to start strengthening the muscle. It should be controlling those hips. Seven, eight, nine, ten. Good. Yeah, I can feel glute med's done some work there. Okay, next up, what have we got? Now we're in the, a lunge circuit. And so you're doing a lunge. And then you can see with the medicine ball, you're reaching the medicine ball down, down close to the ground and back up. From the lunge, you're moving into a bit of a knee drive. It's quite difficult to do this on turf and barefoot because it's bringing in all your balance muscles, but I'm actually doing a pretty good job here. This. Okay, great. 
Right, so we're looking at a kind of a, a lunge with a wood chop type action. So from here, let's give ourselves a bit more space. We're gonna start out as I lunge forwards, wood chop over the front, knee drive through. Wood chop over the front, knee drive through. Wood chop, knee drive. Let's turn that around. Wood chop to a knee drive. Definitely requiring a little bit more of those glutes, a little bit more even through your lower back and core, controlling that wood chop. Okay, what else have we got? This, the more I do this lunge circuit, the more I notice when I'm out running, just control in the body. So foot hits the ground, you know, your leg starts to drive forward, open up. When I'm doing the likes of these lunge circuits, I just notice the balance is better and the strength is better and I feel powerful in my stride. Okay, so a lunge with a twist this time. So we're keeping the ball around about waist height. So I'm gonna lunge forwards, twisting over the front leg, bring it back. Much more core control required to do this. There we go. Let's see if we can squeeze one more in here. Oop. Go again. Don't need to overextend on the lunge. It's more about the control of the movement. You can see I fell out of that one. Let's try that again. Stepping out, control, drive through. Stepping out, control, drive through. Much better. Control, drive through. Okay, I actually forgot to say while recording this video that if you're enjoying this video, please do consider subscribing. We've got loads more videos like this coming up and I would love to have you along for the ride. Okay, back to the video. TheraBand stuff, you'll have seen this in some of my other videos or in the activation routine on joggingroom.com. TheraBand is just getting the glutes activated. I do it before sessions, which is one of the sessions on joggingroom.com, the activation routine. But this is different. This is doing enough TheraBand exercises that I cause fatigue, which will give strength. So I do it to one side, left or right. Then I do it diagonally, you know, off to one side, but to a diagonal. And then I do it backwards, but again, diagonally and okay. straight so back. going around the clock with this. It's kind of around the world with yeah. the TheraBand. Okay. So if you've ever done around the world lunges, this is doing around the world with the TheraBand. As an activation route. Right, I got you, great. So we'll put this away. Let's get the band out. So I'm gonna go around the ankles. Good, so little knee bend to start with. From here, it's gonna start out going straight out 90 degrees. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Let's go back at 45. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Trying to keep my torso still forward at 45. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Good, if you find the balance side of this difficult, yeah, I know with single leg exercises full stop, a lot of us do. Check out the free seven day challenge that's on the Bulletproof Runners website. It'll really help you improve that balance, that stability in all these single leg exercises. Give that a go, but it'll be linked up down in the description. Okay, and then eight this way. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I can feel two things going on. So as I'm standing on this leg, providing stability, I feel glute need working hard. Okay, so particularly on the outside of the hip there, really starting to fatigue while I'm providing that stability. And on this side, depending on the direction I'm moving, I feel those little muscles around the hip kicking in to create that movement against the, the resistance of the band. So great exercise. Right, what else you got for me, Stephen? Let's have a look, buddy. This is called hip lock and knee drive. So. Ooh. You're looking at that okay. right leg at the moment. It's nice and strong. 
and you're holding that band above your head nice and strong. You're locking that back leg strong through the core, whoop, knee drive, and your arm comes down. Let's give that a go. So, let's get rid of this band, there we go. With this, he had the band under his foot, the band then went behind his shoulder. So we're here, staying strong and elongated through this side with the resistance band. And then we're going bent elbow, bent elbow, bent knee. And from here, oh, that's a challenge. That's a challenge. So straight and drive. One, two, three, four, five, six. I'm really having to, this is a lot harder than I thought it would be. Seven, eight, nine, ten. Oh, that's something else. Okay, let's try the other side. So band up and behind. So we're here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Finding this easier. Eight, but still hard work. Nine, ten. Just ten on each side is that. With that is definitely enough to get me working. Stephen, what you got? Let's have a look. This is like a glute bridge, but it, it's a longer lever, which brings the hamstring into it a little bit more. What I do is tuck the pelvis under, come up into the single leg glute bridge, and then I hold for about four or five seconds, enough that I feel it starting to work. Let it work for a bit, move on. Okay, long lever, long lever hamstring bridge. That I'm very familiar with. So from here on my back, Keep me decent bend of the knee there. Okay, we're gonna come up into the hamstring bridge, and then we'll just go single leg. So let's hold five seconds, four, three, two, one. Onto my weaker side, five, four, three, two, one. Yeah, those hammies are working. Five, four, three, two, one. Five, Four, three, two, one. Five, four, three, two, one. I need more of this in my life. Five, four, three, two, one. Oh yeah, okay. That's a good, good hamstring bridge. That certainly fires up the right areas, the backs of those thighs. All right, what else have we got? If you have, then you can do two to three sets of you know, I was doing, I think, five or six holds at five seconds. This is an adductor hold. Okay. Be very careful with this. You're in a side plank. You're trying to keep the body straight. And then you're, I'm doing it on my foot, like a side plank mm -hmm. on the foot, working the obliques and the adductor. Right, I got you. Okay, so adductor planks. These are brutal. So like he says, be very, very careful with these. From here, the way I like to set up, we're gonna go elbow underneath shoulder. In this position, we're gonna come up into the plank, and then bring that lower leg off the ground. Just gonna go five second holds. So four, three, two, one, and come down. We're gonna do three of these on each side. Up we go. Four, three, two, one, and down. Up we go again. Four, three, two, one, and down. Should feel that inner thigh working. Let's do the other side while we're here. Okay. Getting the setup. This box, if anything, is a little bit high. Okay, and up we go. Four, three, two, one, and down. Okay, let's go again and lift. Five, four, three, two, one, and down. Up we go again. Five, four, three, two, one, and down. We'll do one more. Five, four, three, two, one, 
and down. Good. They really begin to fire those adductors up. Okay, let's have a look. What's next? There is a lot going on, but very good exercise. All right, this is great. This is quite new. Okay. If you get tight in the psoas or the hips or around here, this is like you're in the lunge position, get the pelvis tucked under, hold the dumbbell above your head, and then you're reaching, as you can see, down to the ground. But you want the movement to come from, basically from your hip up to the rib mm -hmm. cage. And that's, it's, it's kind of a, it strengthens, but it also dynamically starts to get that area moving. I guarantee you, if you start playing with that area right now, you'll hate life. I guarantee if you're a partner. <laughs> right, yeah, sounds good. Okay, so let's find a dumbbell. We don't want to get too heavy. Just working on form. So he had the same leg as was forwards as the arm that was up. Really reaching for the sky here. And we were coming down, tap and back up. Tap and back up. We work for a bit more range. We get a flat hand. That's good. Down and back up. Now. I'm really working to keep this dumbbell pressed away. I can feel that through my obliques. Really feel that through my obliques on that outward side. Lengthening here, and that's shortening to lift me back up. So from a running posture perspective, as well as a hip control perspective, I feel how that's definitely, definitely beneficial. Not done this before. Interesting exercise. Let's try the other side. So from here, Let's go front on this side. So straight up, going hand flat. And there. The hand feels a bit like a the top arm. Almost has this kind of Turkish get-up type feeling to it. If you've ever done any of those with the kettlebell. But this is far more focused on getting me working through my obliques. So I'm controlling the movement up and down. Okay, one more. Yeah, I like this. I like this a lot. Good one, Stephen. Okay, might add that into my program. Moving forwards. Moving on, let's have a look. Lunge, dip, hip thrust. If you're new to gym, you can start with just doing the lunge. Okay, lunge hip you drive. can also start with just doing a lunge with a dumbbell. Here we go. Cool, so I see what's going on here. We need to get a bit more movement. So, there we go. Stephen was doing this bare bar, so I will happily follow suit and also go bare bar. And from here, we're gonna reverse lunge, then end up in this high knee. Okay, so I'm gonna set up knowing that I can reach this comfortably. So probably about here, that's nice. Am I gonna take you out? Maybe, let's just shift across. Okay, are we ready? So it's a reverse lunge, popping straight through to a knee drive. Oh yeah, reverse lunge, pop. That knee drive, although I'm knee driving forwards with my right leg, I can feel myself having to create the power of a push off in my left leg, what ends up as the rear leg. Let's do one more. There, bang, through. I like that a lot. Okay, other side. So, reverse lunge and pop through. Driving the hips forwards. Reverse lunge, pop through. Three, four, five, and there's six. Yeah, I can feel that. Really opens my hips up. Having a bit of extra weight just from the bare bar gives a nice little bit of resistance to give me something to push against. I like that. Okay, Stephen, what, what now? Now we're into a squat. It's a quarter squat. I like a quarter squat because I feel like the running technique only goes to a quarter yep. squat. Doesn't mean that full squats aren't important. I'm just probably not flexible enough in my lower back to mid back to do a full squat. Okay, cool. So I think Stephen is spot on in terms of the importance for us runners of really getting the top 
the top quarter of the squatting movement nailed down. Because that, if we think about running form and the amount of hip range we use, it's this that we need to get good at. If you do a full squat and you've got good form, props to you. But really, as runners, it's not gonna really help us. This sort of thing though, much, much, much more powerful. So, let's get rid of our box. That'll do. Quarter squat only needs, realistically, if I show you here, quarter squat realistically needs to be down to about there and back up. And it's the top of the movement in the main video, the thrust through here that he was talking about. So here, squeeze your glutes, push through the heels, one. And there, two, three, a bit slower on the way down, four, chest up, five, six, seven, eight, good stuff. So, Stephen's only been working through, obviously, well, no, we've only been working through one set of each. Stephen does two or three. Again, so what you're seeing here is literally you can see how you get on with those yourself. Okay, so look, he moves on now into some foam rolling work, mobility work. Rather than do that here, now, I suggest you check out his video, which I've linked down in the description. But I'd love to know how you found this little overview of his workouts. Like I said, I only did one set of everything. See how you go if you do two, three sets like he is. I'd love to hear how you get on. I'll see you in another video soon. Take care.